Over the next few minutes, you're going to learn something you should have already known, but almost certainly do not. You're going to learn more about what sparked the global financial meltdown. You're going to learn that it was a criminal enterprise. You're even going to learn who might be responsible. If by the time this presentation is over, you're not angry, and that means you weren't paying attention, you should probably watch it again. To understand what happened, first we need to go back to March 11th, 2008, when something very strange occurred on Wall Street. Somebody made what seemed like a ridiculous bet that, within the next few days, the share price of Bear Stearns would drop faster and harder than ever in that company's history, or the history of nearly any other company of its size. Was Bear Stearns in trouble? Well, like most every other American investment bank, during the housing boom that was ending in those days, Bear had made some bad investments in the subprime mortgage market, and, like most every other American investment bank, its balance sheet had suffered as a result. Yet on March 11th, Bear had several billion dollars in cash on hand, meaning there was certainly no risk that the company would be unable to make good on its near-term promises. However, somebody was betting otherwise. In a move many have compared to buying $1.7 million worth of lottery tickets, somebody bought $1.7 million in Bear Stearns put options, giving them the right to sell 5.7 million shares of Bear Stearns on a future date for $30 a piece. But here's the catch. At the time, Bear was trading at around $65 per share, and that future date was a mere seven trading days away. Those were some unusually long odds, so long, in fact, that those options weren't even considered reasonable and thus not even offered for sale. Whoever bought them had to make a special request, which, at the time, seemed so outlandish, the trade itself sparked news coverage and one expert in the field to save the trade. It's not even on the page of rational behavior, unless you know something. Know something? Like what? Well, stick around for a few more minutes and I'll tell you what they knew. The day after those put options were sold, somebody sold some shares of Bear Stern stock, but never delivered the shares to the buyers. Now that's not entirely unheard of. After all, accidents do happen, and so the system is set up to temporarily accommodate those so-called delivery failures by crediting the buyer's account with what essentially amount to IOUs intended to take the place of the undelivered shares until the temporary impediment to their delivery can be resolved. The buyer never knows they've received IOUs in place of actual shares, and that's okay because in the meantime, until they can be replaced, those IOUs are treated like the real thing in that they can be bought and sold. In other words, the occasional stock delivery failure is a normal part of the marketplace. However, what was happening to Bear Stearns on that day was not at all normal. That's because on that day, over one million shares went undelivered, an unusually high percent of all shares trading. The next day, the number was still up to 750,000 shares of Bear Stearns that people bought but never received. The day after that, the number of undelivered shares rose to 2 million. The next day, nearly 14 million. By the next day, there remained 13 million of these phantom shares coursing through the system. Then 12 million, then 8 million. All told, between the day those options were purchased and the day they came due, somebody caused the supply of Bear Stearns stock to artificially swell by many millions of shares. To understand why this is a problem, we need only refer back to the most basic principle of economics, that is supply and demand, and the fact that when supply goes up and demand remains unchanged, price will always go down. One look at the chart comparing each day's delivery failures with the same day's closing stock price, and we see that as expected. The principle of supply and demand held true in the case of Bear Stearns as well. What made all this possible is a small but lethal loophole in the United States stock settlement system which, until recently, permitted a manipulative form of stock trading commonly known as naked short selling. 